Serious Reddit, what are stories about picture perfect families who do f asterisk asterisk kd up stuff behind closed doors? I had a friend in high school whose family would lock every door in their house. I mean, every door. If there was a door, it would be locked, and the key hidden somewhere in the house. I don't know if they were afraid of home invasions or what, but it was crazy and took forever just to navigate the house. For instance, to get to the guest bathrooms you'd have to open the hallway door with a key, hidden on the window will in the living room. Then, under the left hand corner of the hallway carpet was the key, to open the linen closet. Finally, in the linen closet under a stack of towels on the second shelf from the bottom, would be the key to open the bathroom. It was like that for every friggin door. Multiple keys to open multiple doors, to get the right key, to open the room you wanted to get into. Even the fridge was chained and locked with a key. My friend asked me to sleep over once. Once. I never went back. These twin girls I knew from middle school were really nice, polite, had straight A's, did community service, and were overall pretty well rounded. Their parents seemed relatively normal and supportive. Later found out that the parents would make the girls stand on their heads until they passed out if they got a bad grade or acted out in any way. Guy I went to high school with had what looked to be a perfect family. He was a football star, mom and dad were successful, and they even had a white picket fence around their house. One day, he and his brother come home to find mom and a dad dead in the driveway. His dad was cheating, the mom found out and waited till he got home shot and killed him then shot herself in the driveway no less fucked up a friend of mine and her family slash family friends back in her state are involved with a lot of foster care her family has a couple of foster kids at the moment i think basically one of her family friends who also takes foster kids in had this one iranian kid he was adopted on the side by a really normal, upper middle class white Australian family, except he was also kept in a cage in their shed as a dog. Their entire family was really pleasant and completely normal, their other biological children were also completely fine. They were discovered when the grandmother of that family came to visit, and asked what the barking was, went to the shed, and found the child in a cage barking madly. When the grandmother asked what the hell was happening, the parents of the family just responded with, oh he's just the dog, ignore him. She obviously reported it, and now my friend babysits for the child every so often. He's pretty normal now, but he has really awful reactions to certain sounds. They ended up contacting the biological mother who was some Iranian girl who lived with her family, but she didn't want to know anything about it, as long as he was okay now. The people who currently take care of him are convinced that it was a child of sexual abuse slash rape, after seeing the mother's reaction, but a they can't really say anything I guess. My wife family are the worst people I have ever met. When she was younger she was seriously depressed, and still is. She attempted suicide by taking a fistful of pills. Her mom found her passed out on the living room floor next to the bottle of pills, and rushed her to the ER. The doctors asked why she was passed out, and why she was here at the ER and her mom wouldn't tell them that she took a bunch of pills. Just kept saying I don't know what's wrong with her to keep up the whole my family wouldn't do that kind of thing. After we got married, they kept giving us advice along the lines of if you want to have perfect marriage like we do, you must do this, this and this then they get a divorce. I fucking hate those people. When I was in school, there was one girl who epitomized all American girl next door cheerleader. She was gorgeous with blue eyes, long blonde hair, perfect body, and always had this 100 watt smile. She was on homecoming court, and so was her little sister. Her family was prominent locally, the stay at home mom ran the PTA, the dad had a prestigious job. This girl was on a parent imposed diet, since at least 3rd grade, when I met her, despite never being fat. If she or her sister sassed her parents, or got less than a B plus on an assignment, they were told they were dogs, and they were forced to crawl around the house, and eat their food from dog bowls under the kitchen table. I had a really sweet friend in high school. I'd been to church with her family, we'd been really great friends, she made excellent grades, was commander of the rotic squadron, appointed by the instructors, and much much more. During the brief time we were dating, she confided in me that her father periodically raped her starting on her 15th birthday, and that he'd done the same thing to her older sister for her 15th birthday. 
I didn't ask why, I was just left kinda numb at that point. She revealed to me that she was pregnant, and that her father had scheduled her an abortion within the week, because it was 99% certainly his. Her older sister had to have a hysterectomy, because apparently he was especially rough with her, and caused massive internal trauma. Typing it on Reddit seems so tame. Honestly, the conversation we had, was visceral and emotional unlike anything we'd ever had before. She screamed, I screamed, she cried, I held her, and she cried some more. Eventually she cried herself to sleep, and ended up napping at my place for a few hours, while I just sat at the foot of my bed, crying. I cried like a baby that night. There was a brother-sister pair at my high school. Their parents were divorced, and the dad was a little weird, but he coached Little League, and was known as a generally good dad. The kids were amazing super popular, but because they were amazing people, not because they were mean. Everyone loved their mom too, she was a mother figure to a lot of kids at school. And then one Friday, the brother and sister didn't show up at school, and they stopped responding to texts. A group of their friends decided to drop by their house, and looked through the window, and saw the dad on the floor, shot through the head. Apparently, he was bipolar, and had shot his two kids in the head, while they were sleeping next to each other on the couch, then shot the wife's dog, who was staying with them, then himself. None of us ever understood exactly what happened, or why he did it, but our small school wasn't quite the same for a very long time after that. I have never heard a more profound silence on campus than I did that Monday morning. On the outside, my friend's family have a huge mansion, are eloquent, drive expensive cars, wear expensive suits, are all attending Ivy League schools, or graduated from an Ivy League school. In the inside it is a whole different story. My friend is sleeping with his dad's girlfriend who is planning on marrying. His dad is 52, this girl is 25, and my friend is 20. His dad and brother didn't know, and still do not know. He tells me that he is not just doing this because he find her attractive, but to get back at his dad for barely spending any time with him. Apparently, his dad told him that he couldn't spend any time because he had a lot of work to do, but somehow has enough time to go on a one month vacation in Europe with his girlfriend. This was in a quite a big town a couple of years ago, so there was this one guy he was pretty religious everybody knew him as the good guy, but at home he would rape his own daughter, she was about 18 or 19, and her mother knew, but couldn't do anything about it. So one day the father gets his daughter pregnant, and realizes he is fucked, so he looks up on the internet, how to remove the kid from his daughter's stomach, and buys the tools needed, he then proceeds to get his daughter, and try the things he learned, and she died during the process, the media then caught the news and everybody knew, and the father was sent to jail, and his family were living in a huge mess after that. My hubby's uncle's family was that perfect, straight laced, Mormon family family of seven, church every Sunday, well behaved kids, etc. One Thanksgiving day, things blew up in front, if the whole family. Long story short, family was arguing about some things, and the end of the day turned out to be people screaming, and one of his nephews strangling him. My hubby had to rip him off his uncle. After that incident, all these stories began to unravel. Apparently his uncle was abusive toward his children and wife. She was having her affair with someone half her age. She would sneak guys to her house and have her oldest daughter watch to make sure her husband wasn't coming home. Also there was rumors of the dad, hubby's uncle, having an affair with his own stepdaughter. Also the oldest boy in the family would go around flashing his thang to his little sisters. Sad. Just sad. His youngest daughters are such sweethearts too. This is my life right now. On the outside well educated nice family with a working dad, a stay at home mum, and two smart nice kids. In private? We're up to our ears in debt. My mum is only stay at home, because her last job ruined her both mentally and physically because of stress, and abuse from her bosses. My dad is stressed out of his mind, because of our problems. My brother and I can't concentrate on our school work, when we know that as soon winter comes for real. We'll sleep in 6 degrees celsius rooms, because our heating doesn't work and we can't afford to replace it, we were royally screwed by the dealers selling it to us, and, because our problems by now are way too big for us to handle, we all just ignore them, 
and go about our day, when in reality we can't really afford the food we eat every day, and try to ignore the calls and letters from the banks and tax people. Rant DL. Doctor we're far up shit creek. Andrew Jarecki initially was going to make a film about children's birthday party entertainers in New York, including the popular clown David Friedman. During his research, Jarecki learned that David Friedman's brother, Jess, and his father, Arnold, had been convicted of child sexual abuse. Jarecki interviewed some of the children involved and ended up making a film focusing on the Friedmans. The investigation into Arnold Friedman's life started after a federal sting operation, when he received a magazine of child pornography from the Netherlands by mail. In searching his great neck, New York home, investigators found a collection of child pornography. After learning that Friedman taught children computer classes from his home, local police began to suspect him of abusing his students. In police interviews, some of the children Friedman taught stated Friedman played bizarre sex games with them during their computer classes. Jarecki interviewed some of these children himself, some stated that they had been in the room with other children alleging abuse, and that nothing had happened. The film portrayed police investigative procedures as the genesis of a witch hunt in the Friedman's community. The Friedman's took home videos while on old Friedman, and, later, his son Jess, awaited trial. They were allowed to stay at home, in order to prepare for court. The pictures were not made with publishing in mind, but as a way, to record what was happening in their lives. The movie shows much of this footage, family dinners, conversations, and arguments. Arnold's wife quickly decided that her husband was indeed guilty, and advised him to confess and protect their son. Arnold Friedman pleaded guilty to multiple charges of sodomy and sexual abuse. According to the Friedman family, he confessed in the hopes that his son would be spared prison time. Jess Friedman later confessed as well, but now claims he did so to avoid being sent to prison for life. He said in mitigation that his father had molested him. Arnold Friedman admitted to molesting two boys, but not those who attended his computer classes. He is also quoted as admitting that, when he was 13, he had sex with his younger brother, Howard, who was 8 years old at the time of the abuse. Howard Friedman has said he does not recall this. Arnold Friedman committed suicide in prison in 1995, leaving a $250,000 life insurance benefit to his son. Jess Friedman was released from prison in 2001, after serving 13 years of his sentence. Both of my parents' families are fucked up. They both come from very old wealthy families. They have the kinds of names that will get you into a country club totally going around the decade-long wait lists. They were both on born onto the social registry which is the list of old money people in the us. My grandfather on my mother's side was an extreme alcoholic. The problem with being rich and being an alcoholic is that you don't end up on the street begging for more alcohol. Instead you just end up dead. He convinced my grandmother to drop out of an Ivy League school to live with him at his shit school. While there he got so drunk that he was in a coma for two months. After having three kids and living off of his mother's cash he decided to start having an open affair with a German prostitute. I say open because who knows how many affairs happened prior to this one. My grandmother acted like there was nothing wrong but they did get divorced when he refused to even hide his mistress from the kids. And when my mother asked for college book money, he wasn't paying for any of the tuition. Even though he inherited millions he refused, because it would set a bad precedent of the kid asking for money from the parents. Keep in mind he has been living off his mother's money his entire life. My father's family was a bit worse. From what I have gathered my grandfather inherited millions from his parents. He was also an extreme alcoholic. He beat my father, his mother, and his sister. He sent my father off to boarding school and all of his wrath went to my aunt, who I haven't seen in 15 years, because she thinks my father left her when he was shipped off. I don't know much about the family, but what I do know is that at one point, when I was 5 my grandfather came to our house and drunkenly stole our curtains. I do not know why. My father has implied that he is dead, but they never went to a funeral, and there is no record of his death applies to my family, for sure. I was the valedictorian of my senior class, editor-in-chief of my high school yearbook, and early decision acceptance to Northwestern. My dad was a VP, drove a BMW, and we lived in the nicest gated neighborhood in town. 
Everyone assumed our family was perfect, until I abruptly moved out 6 months before graduation. No one knew what an insane controlling freak my dad secretly was. In high school I gained some weight after the death of a close friend, about 20 pounds. Dad put me on a weight loss or punishment program. I had to lose 3 pounds a week, in order to not be grounded. At first I kept up, but it got to be too much eventually. It was cumulative as well, so if I only lost 2 one week it was for the next. I was so ashamed I never told anyone, until it got to be too much to handle, and I broke down to my gf at the time. Dad didn't know I was a lesbian either. She told me he was insane, and that I was well within a healthy weight range. Even though she was a health nut marathon runner, I didn't believe her, until she showed me on a BMI calculator. When I confronted my dad about being done with the program he said, you're not done. I don't know what weight you need to be at, but I'll know it, when I see it. Thanks dad for all the years of body image issues and the many more to come. To all appearances, my wife and I were a pretty well perfect couple. We went everywhere together, and she was always the life of the party. Behind closed doors she was pretty much a lunatic, with wild mood swings and insane, I mean, literally insane, depression that would lead her to talk about wanting to die. She was pretty drug dependent, if it was pills it was booze. There's other stuff, too, but that's the big thing. She eventually got sick, and ended up committing suicide due to being, physically, ill and feeling hopeless about that. Everyone was baffled how this could happen, and how someone so seemingly happy and intense could just kill themselves. But really I wasn't so much surprised as shocked. It was over 3 years ago, so I'm really pretty much over it and all that. But every time I see a happy person, I wonder, are they really happy, or do they go home, and talk about how they want to die? TL, doctor, seemingly perfect couple, but one of them is insane and ends up dying.